in our uh, uh, noon class, the noon class wanted to stay in the book of Daniel. Now, in our um, outline, we made a leap from Daniel all the way to the book of Luke. And so we're not going to do that. Uh, that's it. We'll probably uh, cover uh, much of the New Testament when, it, when I do a survey of the New Testament. But uh, since we were in the book of Daniel and we did the first two chapters of the book of Daniel on last week, uh, and, and let me again admonish you, if you have the outline of, of our reading, you can do that at home. But let's go to Daniel chapter 3. <clears throat> let me remind you that uh, Daniel was one of the um, Jews that were brought from Jerusalem in captivity to Babylon. Um, his name was changed along with uh, the three Hebrew boys that we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were Babylonian names that were given to them. And whenever you change a person's name, you also change their identity. They wanted them to, uh, in essence, become Babylonians, but they would not uh, submit to the king's food and they would, would not submit to the gods of the Babylonians. They wanted to stay true to the God of heaven. And so chapter three, after Nebuchadnezzar has been told about his greatness, he uh, captures that in building a golden image. And so starting at chapter 3 verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made a gold-plated image whose height, including the pedestal, was 60 cubits, 90, 90 feet, and its width 6 cubits, 9 feet. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to the, assemble the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. In other words, Nebi was kind of full of himself. You know, pride always goes before a fall. Um, and so verse 3, then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and speakers of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, four-stringed harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that the king, Nebuchadnezzar, had set up. You see, so they had their own uh, version of earth, wind, and fire back then. Uh, he is told, uh, you know, by uh, the king, all of the people, notice it said, of every nation. So this was not just Babylon. This was everybody under King Nebuchadnezzar's administration, and God had made him the supreme power of that particular time. So all nations and everybody in their own language was to uh, bow down and worship this image when they heard the music, right? Uh, verse 6, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. So when the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and speakers of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Um, let me just pause and say it's easy to go with the flow. When, if you've ever been in a crowd, you know, uh, it's easy to go with the, in the direction that everybody's walking in. It's difficult to turn and then go against the flow. Okay, and if you know anything about salmon, the fish, uh, the fish swims against the current. It's easy to go with the current, but it takes strength to go up against the current. 
And I believe that God has called us as Christians to go against the current of contemporary uh, movements, of contemporary uh, walk, that we ought to be different. Uh, God has made us a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and we are to um, walk to the beat, as Dr. King would say, of a different drummer. And so they, you know, these people all bowed before this uh, image that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. Verse 8, at that time certain Chaldeans came forward and brought malicious accusations against the Jews. They say to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Now notice, and, and let me just say this, if you're trying to live right, if you are trying to stand for something, you're always going to have detractors. You're always going to be somebody who don't like the fact that you're trying to do it the right way. Um, they especially didn't like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because these were Jews who had been brought from Jerusalem, planted in Babylon, and the king put them over the Babylonians. And so there were people, the inhabitants of Babylon, who would like to get rid of them because they were holding positions that some of them probably wanted. And so they go to the king and tell the king, listen, these cats that you put over us, they done messed up, king. You know, uh, they, you, you made this decree. And they won't even bow. They won't bow to your image. King, what you going to do? And so they set it up, right? Even told the king, word by word, what the king had decreed. By the way, uh, parenthetically, Christians ought to uh, remind God of what he said. Because when you pray God's word back to him, God will answer prayer. And he will say yes to his own word. And so, you know, whereas it's negative in this passage, we can always turn it into a positive if we just take uh, the elements of it and, and uh, as we say, Christianize it. <laughs> so, uh, verse 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made very good, you know why the king is giving them another chance? He likes them because they were handsome. They were intelligent. They were head and shoulders above his folk. Uh, God had given them favor. And so he wants to, he really don't want to get rid of them. He wants them to just be obedient. And you know, in life, as long as you don't uh, buck the system, if you go with the flow, you know, people will try to, you know, go with you. But whenever you try to live in such a way uh, that cuts against the grain, you know, sometimes uh, people will set traps for you. Mm -hmm. But we need to always remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, against rulers of the darkness of this world. And, and when you know that, you don't fight uh, people 
Uh, we got to fight fire with fire. We got a spiritual fight on our hands. We need to use our spiritual warfare uh, to be successful. And so he's given them another chance. Um, but if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of, listen to this, my hands. In other words, he put himself on the level of God's. You know, ain't no God around can, can help you if I get my hands on you. Right? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now this is the time when the church ought to be excited. Every child of God, you ain't have to wait, wait until they get in the furnace. It is standing time. They're standing for something and they're telling the king, listen, we know our God is able. And we're not going to bow to no images, none of your gods. We're going to stand in the place that God has placed us. I think that's what we all need to do, don't you? You know, God didn't bring you out of sin and out of the world for you to go back again. You know, we, we, we need to stand in the freedom that God has called us into. And so they said, we, King, we ain't going to do that. Well, guess what? Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, was filled with fury. And his facial expression changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Now that's putting a lot of kindling on the fire. You know, seven times hotter than it was normally heated? He's, a, he's really mad. Verse 20, he commanded certain strong men in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these three men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their turbans, and their other clothes and were thrown into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. Now here's where, you know, people who are skeptics or agnostics, people who are not believers, believe that this is just a fairy tale, a fable, because, you know, who could imagine or believe that men could be thrown into a fiery furnace and, and not, you know, be consumed by the flames? And so they don't look at this as realistic. However, I contend that if God made the heavens and the earth, if he made the fire, I don't have him, I don't have a problem with him controlling it. You know, I, I've been out on a, a cruise, you know, and I look out at all of that water, oceans and whatever. If, if God put all of that out there, you mean to tell me God cannot do what only God can do? And so I don't have no real problem with this. And if he put those oceans out there, you, if you're in a desert place, I don't think he have a problem giving you a drink. Right? And so I just don't have those issues. Uh, our God is an awesome God. And so they threw these boys into the fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know that fire was, was terrible. If the people that were throwing them in got burned up. Verse 23, but these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. Verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king looked and was astounded. And he jumped up and said to his counselors, 
Did we not throw three men who were tied up into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, certainly, O king. Verse 25, he answered, look, I see four men untied, walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not heard. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Really? Here's a heathen king who hadn't been to seminary. He hadn't learned theology. But he peers into the fire. He can count. And if we throw three in, I see four. And notice what he sees. He sees them not tied up and walking in the midst of the flames. Mm -hmm. You know what that tells me? That the Lord don't take the heat out of flames, but he insulates his people in the midst of the flames. Mm -hmm. And he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. When they threw him in, they were tied. But when the Lord showed up with them, they untied and walking around. And the king says, and this fourth one looks like a son of the gods. Now notice he says, gods, G-O-D-S, small letter, because he's still a pantheist. He still wor worships multiple gods. He does not know the God of heaven. And most of the people in that time, as it is today, worship idol gods. They don't worship the God of heaven. But he knew that something phenomenal was taking place. I see something phenomenal too. Because if this is the son of God in a furnace hundreds of years before Bethlehem, that means what we are seeing here is a Christophany or a theophany, an appearance of the second person of the Trinity in the Old Testament. Because you know what? If you stand up for the Lord, the Lord will show up for you. And when the Lord shows up, he shows out. And so here he is in the midst of the flames with his people. And guess what? They're not singed. They're not burned. Listen to this. I see four men, verse 25, untied, walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Verse 25, then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing furnace, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of there. Come here. Then Shadrach, notice he wasn't going in. <laughs> he wasn't crazy, was he? <laughs> then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. Verse 27, the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered around them and saw that in regard to these men, the fire had no effect on their bodies, their hair was not singed, their clothes were not scorched or damaged. Even the smell of smoke was not on them. Don't tell me what God can do. And this is what I believe. Because, you know, I've studied other passages and go to the New Testament, John helps us. He says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And so the Word is eternal. And the Word is spiritual. But that Word became flesh. Because in order to impact a physical world, 
God had to come down and become a part of the physical world that he had made. And so the, the, the son of God is in the midst of the struggle with his people. Mm -hmm. Here's what I love about this. He prefigured Bethlehem, then he had to go back home so he could get born. <laughs> That's got a God we serve. He's not bound by time and space. Right? I, I like to say it like this. He's before time, he's after time, he's above time, and he's below time. And if you wait on him, he's always on time. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. That's the son of God. He comes and he is in the midst of the struggle. And you know what? The Lord is in the midst of our struggle. Amen. Today, we have furnace-like situations that confront us. We have situations where people doubt the God that we serve. And yet in the midst of the struggle, God is right there with us. I'm an early subscriber to what David said in the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord comes down in order to rescue his servants. Mm -hmm. They are not singed. They're not damaged. There's no smoke in their garments. Verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shajak, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants, who believed in, trusted in, and relied on him. Don't, don't, uh, don't miss what the king says, because this is very instructive. You got to believe in the Lord, you got to trust in the Lord, and you got to rely on the Lord. As children of God, believe in the Lord, trust in the Lord, rely on the Lord. And then watch God work. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Verse 29, therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their houses be made a heap of rubbish. For there is no other. They're in a heathen foreign country away from their homeland. They're foreigners. They're in captivity. But God elevates them because God knows where we are. He knows what we need. <coughs> And when God promotes, can't nobody take you down. Mm -hmm. And when God demotes, you can't go up. God opens doors, can't nobody shut, and he closes doors that can't nobody open. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God we serve. Questions, comments about this third chapter of the book of Daniel. I think one of the things, Pastor, and, and, and again, some of the things that I've been looking at recently is many times we pray for God to take us out of situations, but many times if our perspective will change and when he does not take us out of situations, look for the reason and rationale why he does not take us out. Many times, again, we want to get out. Yeah. But in this case, they believe that God could save them, even if he did not. They believe that. And then in many cases, even when we have to stay in those situations, he provides insulation. Yeah. In the midst of what we go through. That's a great point. That's a great point, that God won't take you out of all situations. You know, uh, 
we suffer sometimes just like the unjust suffer. We, we're in the same atmosphere. We live in the same world. And sometimes we got to go through something. But we're not alone. Mm-hmm. But God is ever present. Yes. And he's watching. Mm-hmm. And he knows his own. And he cares. Somebody sung the song, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Mm-hmm. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. You don't know how many sparrows there are in the world. I mean, have you ever just looked at birds? And a sparrow is a common bird. Mm -hmm. You know, a sparrow is not like an eagle. You know, you see eagles every now and then. You see hawks, you know, soaring in the sky. But sparrows look like they're... You know, billions of them. And yet the Lord takes notice of every sparrow. And if he watches the bird, I know he watches me. Um, we got to believe. You know, it's a trust factor here. You got to believe that God is who he says he is. You got to trust him and know that he is able to do exceedingly more abundantly than we can even imagine. Mm-hmm. And if he chooses not to take us out, well, at least we know God is able. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now. Amen. Because in the end, we win. Mm-hmm. Here's the other thing, uh, and we shared this in the, in the noon class. God did not bring you here to stay. This is very important. Adam and Eve, when they messed up, God evicted them out of the garden. You know why? Because of their sin? They were in a sin state. But guess what was in that garden? The tree of life. Had they eaten from that tree? They would have been perpetually in a sinful state, separated from God for eternity. So God drove them out. And he put an angel with a flaming sword at the entranceway so that they could not go back in. Guess what tree you're going to see when you get to the New Jerusalem? Tree of life's going to be there. Why? Because we're going to spend eternity in the heavenlies. So we're going to leave here. And since we know we're not here to stay, since we know that our bodies are temporal, that they are, they are you know, um, eroding every day, you look in the mirror. You know, you look in the mirror and you have been sent messages. Right? That you ain't what you used to be. You go back and look at your high school graduation pictures. Change has taken place. I used to have a big fro. I I was so proud of my fro till when the wind blew. It would go to one side, but when it was straightened back up. My fro was bigger than Dr. J's. It was black and, you know, but look at me now. Gray has invaded what used to be totally black hair. Um, you know, when we run today, it ain't like when we were 20. You, know, you used to run and not even be tired. <laughs> now you take a few steps and you got to take a breath. Right? But those are messages that things are changing. Mm-hmm. And that time is winding up Mm -hmm. because this is not our home we're just pilgrim and strangers traveling through this land we're headed for our home Mm -hmm. and if you walk right and if you allow the Lord to order your steps one of these days you're gonna make it home Mm -hmm. and oh what a joy that will be 
when I eulogized, you know, my father, um, I, uh, I used to talk about how we used to meet. I would take him to Chicago. He loved the big city. He loved Chicago. And we would walk down Michigan Avenue. We'd walk down Lake Michigan. Um, and it was just I mean, remarkable sights and scenery. Um, and it was, it was just good to be there. But we can't meet on Michigan Avenue anymore. We can't walk Lakeshore Drive anymore. But one of these days, when I get home, I'm going to meet him on Amen Boulevard and Hallelujah Way. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at a city whose builder and maker is God himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I just happen to believe that Chicago will pale in comparison mm -hmm. to what heaven is going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be like Paul. When Paul came to the end of his journey. He said, I fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And now is laid up for me treasures in heaven. And not for me only, but for all them that love his appearing. We need to be getting ready. Mm -hmm. So if the Lord don't save us out of certain calamities and and storms that come up. It's not because he's not able. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because he's taken us to something to take us through. Amen. Maybe somebody needs to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, that if God can do it for us, he can do it for them. Amen. And then the songwriter said, if I never had a problem, yes. I wouldn't know God could solve them. I yes. wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Through it all, I've learned how to trust in Jesus. I've learned how to trust in the Lord. I've learned how to depend upon his word. That's what we see happening here in, the, in uh, Daniel chapter 3. These boys depended on the Lord and the Lord came through for them. Anybody else got any comments or Now, the book of Daniel is so filled with, with so we're just going to camp here in the, in the book of Daniel. So you all keep reading your, your daily reading, uh, but we're going to read um, uh, through this book because I believe there's 12 chapters, but it is power packed. Um, and I'll just give you a coming attraction. Um, Nebuchadnezzar is going to have a grandson. His name is Belchazer who's going to come to power. And this dude is going to do something uh, that he just shouldn't have had to done. You know, I call it house party one. <laughs> you know, he went into uh, the temple of his gods and took out those vessels that had been dedicated from the temple in Jerusalem and poured wine in them, and they're going to try to drink from these vessels and party hardy. They're they, they going to do everything. They thought they were going to have them a great time until they saw a hand writing on the wall that wasn't attached to nothing. Because God knows how to get your attention. Right? And... Uh, the words, many, many, T. Kel, you farson, are going to be written on that wall. And basically what it says is, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And God is going to strip the kingdom from Belchazer and the Babylonians. And he's going to give it to the Medes and the Persians. Um, and the Bible says that when the king saw that hand, his knees knocked. <laughs> And his countenance fell. He looked like he had seen a ghost. How many of y'all know God knows how to get your attention? Amen. I believe God is getting folks' attention today. But folk don't have sometimes eyes to see what God is doing. But God allows things sometimes to happen uh, to let us know 
that with all of our ingenuity, with all of our education, with all of the money that we have, we still have not learned how to live together mm -hmm. as brothers and sisters. And so God allows things to happen, to shake up things, and to remind us that there is a God in heaven mm -hmm. who sits high but looks low. Mm -hmm. So that's a coming attraction. So y'all keep reading in the book of Daniel. Keep continue to read uh, your uh, prescribed readings. I believe... Um, it takes us to Luke 1, Mark 1, Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 22, and then there's reflection days on the 17th and 18th. So, you know, you all can keep up with that, but certainly we'll, we'll, um, we'll be staying in, in the book of Daniel. So, uh, those of you who are joining us on the internet, uh, if you read uh, Daniel chapter 4 and 5, that's probably where we're going to be on next week. So, uh, just a heads up. Praise God, as we uh, continue on this journey of this apocalyptic book, this, this major prophet of the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. Any closing prayer requests? And we, we were praying, uh, Deborah, uh, for all of the names that you listed on the prayer requests. So we, we call their names... Uh, early on when we started out so and we continue to hold them up in prayer yeah go ahead to me um, pastor just ask a special blessing upon the Isles family the Hogan family and uh, and our youth yes all right anybody else all right I'm gonna ask you go ahead Tomir and then just uh, represent us before God in prayer <clears throat> Dear Lord, we now come to the end of Bible study. Father God, we thank you for the lesson on tonight. Yes, God. We thank you for those three Hebrew boys mm. who refused to bow at the first chance, at the second chance, because they served a God who was almighty, yes. even more powerful than the king. Yes. And more powerful than the king who took them into captivity. They <laughs> serve the king of kings. Yes, yes. And the Lord of lords. We thank you for the ability to study your word, look mm -hmm. at your word. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us illumination. Yes. That gives us nuggets to allow us to apply what we're learning mm -hmm. each and every day. And our focus should do, be to learn more and more about you. Yes, God. And then again, to once again, make application to your word. Yes. Because your word is a lamp and a light unto our path. Mm -hmm. Father God, we ask a special blessing for each and every one that is here. Yes, each God. and every one that joined us uh, via the internet tonight as well. Yes. We hold up those families, those bereaved families that have recently lost loved ones. Jesus. Like the Isles and the Hogan's and Jesus. anybody else who's recently lost a loved one. Yes. We hold up our youth Jesus. to you now, Father. Lord, we ask that you give them direction. Yes, God. Give them guidance. Because many of them we are losing for one reason or another. Mm. But you are a God that will heal if we just would turn to you. Yes, yes, yes. If we would yes. give our young people to you. If we would just give all to you. And we, if we would just turn from our wicked ways, Jesus. if we would turn back to you, the one who can heal our land, yes. the one who can heal our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls, God. you are always there waiting for us to come back. Mm -hmm. We thank you for always keeping the invitation open. And Father God, we know that the issue and the problem is never on your side because you are the greatest promise keeper ever. Yes, yes. Father God, help us to draw nigh to thee. For now is the time to do that. Yes. Because the time will come when we're not able to draw nigh to mm. you. We ask a special blessing upon any of those who do not know you in the pardon of their sin. Yes, God. Today is a great day to know and learn more about the man from Galilee. Mm. The only man that can save us from the depraved state that we find ourselves in. Jesus. 
We thank you, God, and we ask now that you give us traveling mercy home, mm -hmm. and we would find our homes in the way that we found them when we left. We also ask for refreshment because, again, we desire to come out and learn more about you even after a long work day. Yes. Father God, we ask a special blessing upon our resident theologian. Jesus. That you continue to undergird him. Bless his help meet by his side. Yes, God. And we just ask that you continue to bless True Light Christian ministry yes, spiritually, yes, yes. numerically, and financially. Mm -hmm. All these things we ask in your darling, wonderful son of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Come back and be with us on next Wednesday when again we will go to God's word and glean the truths that he has for us. God bless you and good night.